This is Good Morning Football. I've got the pointer stick, and it is time for a trendsetter Tuesday. Here we go. We pulled some things that were trending over Wild Card Weekend. They weren't as wild as I would have liked, but these are some trending videos, and we're going to give them a social score. Okay. What is a social score? A ridiculously complicated and sophisticated and elevated algorithm that I will not go into details wow, about. Wow, okay, all right. But you guys you don't know. know the answer, and I do. I'm going to okay. show you guys some clips, and you decide which of the following four clips got the highest social score, meaning the most right. retweets and likes and all of that jazz. You guys ready? Bring yeah. up. First up, listen, we had the uh, big news. Gruden gets a, <laughs> Gruden calls him out for his voice cracking. Is that, is there anything more embarrassing than that for a dude? I remember being 13 on the school bus, man. That was me. <laughs> but listen, I saw Phillip Rivers play a playoff game with a torn ACL. Willis Reed, the legend here. McDonough getting through that game. Talk about it's incredible. I mean, you got Gruden is way down here, the coolest voice ever. And McDonough, credit for fighting through, Max. A lot of guys would have said no moss. Uh, Gruden, <laughs> the thing that makes it is Gruden gets that last <laughs> dig in. Yeah, that yeah. last dig. They've had all year there's been like weird cup and then Gruden just gets like the crying, last though, when he said yeah. bye to him, you got all schmoopy. <laughs> yeah. And he's gone! <laughs> yeah, it, it, it happens to us. It happens to us all. I loved it, though. I was, I was at home and I was cracking up. I don't know. I guess I just don't understand why it's a trending moment. It was everywhere. Right. Oh, it man, like his a voice big... cracking like multiple, multiple times. That. I think it was like, call your friends, stop what you're doing and turn on this game because McDonough is on one today. You got to hear this. And they did. I feel like when I'm trying to prepare for trendsetters, I really just zoned in on Marcus Peters. Unfortunately, they're out of the playoffs. But Marcus Peters always doing something yeah. to make his way on trendsetters. He had an, a softer side. This week, he's come a long way, guys, from throwing the flag into the stands. Yeah. Here he is showing some, showing some love. Is this full circle, Marcus <laughs> Peters? <laughs> Look at the ref. Look at the ref. Oh, the ref's like, get off me, dude. The, ref, the ref's looking around to his boys like, hold He's... on, wait. watch the ref look around like. Bring it hey. in. Bring it in. Now, <laughs> now if this, this is hey. Peter Schrager. Yes. <laughs> you know what this reminds Don't me? Don't hug Peter. You know what this reminds what, me? What do you got? Being young, being in college, and you're out with your girl, and another girl you don't really know so well comes up to you, and she's mm. like, hey. <laughs> like, oh. Uh, Are you me. saying that ref is putting Marcus Peters in the friend zone? Yeah, he's yeah. not into that right now. Looking at this the girl is like, Peter. I don't know her. This is Peter the day that Kyle met him. Kyle hugged this I hugged story. Him. Kyle hugged Peter, and Peter said, I'm not a hugger. I, 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 at the start of this show, we're like, wow, we got a football show. We're going to be on together. Come here, bring it in. He was like, eh, come on, dude, don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> the guy had a pepper spray. On the road to the wild card victory yeah, in LA. Falcons head. running back, Devonta Freeman, and they ran the ball 39 times in this game. He tried to force his way into the end zone with the assist from Max. This is friendship. This is what you guys would do for each other. This is incredible. See, Max giving him a hug, Peter. That's what he's doing. That's what you do for friends. Well, I'll always help you out in time of need. I'm just not hugging you. No, that's true. That's a Mack truck right there. That is so good. The fact that his name is Mack and he's pushing him in. It does, Peter, you called it out. You, the, the Bush push, this Reggie is, Bush, Matt Liner, Tom Zabikowski was sorry. It's and it's in the USC Stadium, too. So great. Happy for Mack, though. Trendable though? Why were we were so happy this was trending? Solo. No puddle of water with this Mac. No, no, no. We, we we've had some trending Freeman moments this year. This is just but, like a cool yeah. like, uh, pile driver type run at the goal line. And I would argue this wasn't trending. I, yeah, it, see, it, I don't it, get it, it either. It's a good play. Yeah, that's why I love you. All right, finally <laughs> we're going to the Big Easy and into the Superdome. We're following his fourth quarter touchdown against the Panther Saints running back Alvin Kamara. Uh, showed his appreciation by handing out airheads, which I respect the heck out of. So they got Skittles. So they got move. airheads. Okay. They're having a time of their lives all season long. <laughs> Sergio Dip reference. It's okay, he has a whole like drawer of them. Pick in a his flavor. Kitchen. I used to run the hustle on my school bus. Bus uh, 14 at O.E. Thorpe's Classic Academy in Chicago, and I would go and buy these uh, at the store for 10 cents, and I'd sell them for 25. Mark them up. This, Mark what, up. this reminds me of my hustling days. Oh, I was okay. right there with you, Kay. I did the same thing. Yeah, look at that. I was the one got buying them on the, for 20. On the floor. So they got candy everywhere. This guy has an oxygen mask, and these guys are housing <laughs> like should have stuck one up in sugar. Ingram's mask. Okay, full confession, I've never eaten one of those I, ever. I, I've delicious. never had one. You I'm not against them. I just have not lived. I'll have one after the show. The white mystery. Is that right? What do you guys think? Who, won, who had the highest social score? I loved McDonough. McDonough was. Oh, what? Really? You yes. loved it? Yeah. I thought it was just hilarious. Because the gift they kept on giving as the show kind of yeah, deteriorates and then the Gruden aspect. Yeah, right. because of the simple fact that there were so many eyes and ears on that yeah. call, yeah. I'm going with McDonough. Uh -huh. You know, I, I think back to Marshawn handing out his own fruity candy when he was really beast mode and the Seattle had it going, and it reminded me of that sort of the way New Orleans does. When I saw Kamara, I said, that's beast mode. I go with that. I go with those uh, heads of that's air. That's the story and behind the it. the trendsetter for Wild Card Weekend is... Come on now, come on. And the survey says. What is Show the me. Survey oh my God, McDonough. McDonough. 
Doug no. Johnson. <laughs> From voice cracking to crying to getting made fun of by John Gruden. What a day he had. This is bad. Hard weekend. This is a landslide, Kay. Yeah, that is. Yes, it is. <laughs> He's not so great. Uh, still plenty of time to cast your vote for the Castle Edge Clutch Performer of the Week. By the way, you can wait in at NFL.com. The results will be revealed Friday on Total Access. Come on over with Excalibur. Who are we looking at? This is Excalibur? Yeah, that's Excalibur. Exy. Here are the nominees. Who we got, guys? We got Marcus Mariota, of course, two TDs. Uh, and he uh, threw the ball to himself, caught the ball, and that pretty much changed the and game. And he threw the game-winning block. Makes yeah. it, and he threw the game-winning block. Yeah, unbelievable game. All right, there we have it. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, You of can course. vote. Please do, as you do each and every week. NFL.com, those results on total access coming up. Kyle, you've got Excalibur in your game's hand. prime time. I just love that feeling, man. I love knowing that you got to bring your best game trying to get that the ultimate prize and that's that trophy it's really one shot you lose you go home to relive more unforgettable playoff moments from our legends here at nfl network go to nfl.com slash what's next i'm going to deliver some news before we go to will selva uh, to kyle brandt we have terrell davis on the show this week so fired up td Woo! that's a, an nfl playoff legend that's two rings that's going into the game when you couldn't see with a migraine the story i love td it's the perfect time of year to talk to him played with a migraine yeah john i john mike shanahan get in there and yep. they, if and you're not in there they'll never believe the fake you don't need to see and sure enough he was right they beat the packers hall of famer terrell davis will join us here on Thursday, but at the podium, we will be joined by John Gruden. He will be live uh, at his introductory press conference on the NFL Network. You can check that out at 3 p.m. Eastern, all you Raider fans. Will Selva out in the NFL newsroom in L.A. You're hanging out with nobody there, and we get to hang out with TD. Isn't that pretty cool? Uh, I'm jealous for sure. TD, good guy, Hall of Famer, but he is rock solid the best. And as KB mentioned, when it came to the playoffs, he definitely was showing up and showing out mm. every time. <laughs> and, and otherwise, he would if, if he got the call, you know, we know he would ball, right? So. Yes, right. Or the other way around, but yeah. Right. It's yeah, so you guys know what I mean. Yeah. All right, uh, well, la <laughs> well, last week's ESPN report detailing what allegedly may be fissures in the rock-solid foundation laid down by the triumvirate of owner Bob Kraft, head coach Bill Belichick, and quarterback Tom Brady. The report was enough for the team to release a statement saying there's no such thing happening, and neither is Belichick coaching somewhere else. Hey, Bill, there was a report in the New York Daily News this weekend that you would have some interest in, in coaching the Giants. I just want to see if there's any truth to that. Right now, my interest is trying to do the best I can for our football team to get ready for Saturday night against Tennessee. That's where my total focus is. Is your intention definitely to be back with the Patriots next season? Absolutely. Steelers wide receiver Antonio Brown returning to practice on Monday for the first time since injuring his calf in Week 15. He's expected to play Sunday against the Jaguars. Brown trying not to get too far ahead of himself when thinking about taking the field again. When asked if he would be his same explosive self, he said, quote, stay tuned. And he reads coaching staff taking a hit on Monday. The Chiefs losing offense coordinator Matt Nagy to the Bears. Then NFL Network's Tom Pelissero and James Palmer all reporting. KC assistant head coach Brad Childress is planning to retire after 19 seasons in the league. Childress has been with the Chiefs since 2013. And Marcus Mariota's touchdown to himself seemed improbable, but... One Titans fan predicting it would happen. When asked for a bold prediction on Saturday before the game, Alan Matthew responded with Mariota throws a touchdown pass to himself for a touchdown. So Matthew calling his own shot. That one definitely belongs in the GMFB time capsule, or at least that should have had a headline of some kind. Where was Matthew when I was filling out my Powerball tickets last week and it was like 440 million? <laughs> Thanks a lot, bro. I, nowhere to be found. Exactly. That's, what have you done for me lately? That's you know crazy. what I mean? Okay, you just play 43 every time for Powerball. <laughs> <laughs> Great stuff, Will Silva. Nice. I know you enjoyed that shout out to Tay Train here on the show. Your boy Latavius Murray talking much more about Wild Card Weekend. And with that Wild Weekend in the books, we are on to the throwdown round. And in the NFC, it's the Eagles and Vikings coming off a bye. They are rested. They are ready to go. And we here at NFL Network have reporters all across the country on the ground bringing you all the latest. Let's kick it off to Randy Moss with the Vikings.
Good morning, Kay. Here in Minnesota, Vikings players had four days off due to their first-round playoff bye, but they got back to work on Monday, fresher and healthier to, to begin preparations for that rematch on Sunday with the Saints. A couple of guys notably healthier, tight end Kyle Rudolph, who said the bye week was huge for him. He's had an ankle injury the last three weeks of the regular season. And all-pro cornerback Xavier Rhodes, he's had numerous leg injuries. He said the bye week for him was not just good, it was great. Now, some players left, as usual, during the bye week. Some stayed here, like linebacker Anthony Barr, who told me he didn't go back home to California because he wanted to stay locked in and stay focused. Back in week one, these two teams met. You've probably already talked about it. The Vikings won 29-19, to but the Vikings players say they believe the Saints team is a different one now. Let's go to the Eagles and Mike Garofolo. Thank you, Randy. Well, the Eagles return to work here in Philadelphia on Monday, but they're back on the practice field today as they prepare for the Atlanta Falcons, the number six seed. That would be the number six seed that most people are picking to beat the number one seed here at home on Saturday. And this Eagles team is aware of that. They will use that as a chip on their shoulder because they lost their mojo late in the season. So they've got to find a way to get it back. Maybe through that motivation also through some high energy practices that they had last week and are hopeful to continue this week as they build that confidence towards Saturday and that matchup with Atlanta that could be a little